So far in this course, we focused on calculus in two dimensions. And what I mean by that is that there's a single input variable, and then there's a single output variable. It's a y is a function of x. And then when you draw the graph of that scenario, that graph lives in two dimensions. It lives in the xy plane. However, a lot of the things that we might be interested about in the real world might be functions not of just a single variable, but on a whole bunch of different variables. So we want to start the process of replacing all of the different calculus that we've done before for the single variable case in the multivariable case. And perhaps the first question is just, how do we even just sketch curves that involve three dimensions and not just two? And maybe the first question is, how do we even graph things that, that live in this three dimensional situation, not just the two dimensions we've seen before? So the first thing that we're gonna do is label a three-dimensional graph with a positive x-axis, a positive y-axis, and a positive z-axis. And then I can put dotted lines. These are going to be the negative portions of these axes as well. So let me suppose that I gave you a function not of one variable, but a function of two variables, a function x, y. A standard example might be x squared plus y squared. And I'm going to think of x and y as my independent variables, and they are going to be equal to a variable z, which is going to be my dependent variable. Now, how do I graph this thing? Well, one of the things that I might want to look at is what we call a cross-section. And a cross-section is where you go and plug in one of the values. For instance, I can look at the cross-section where I just plug in the value x equal to 0. So this is going to give me 0 squared plus y squared is equal to z. And z equal to y squared, that's just a parabola. We've seen parabolas before. It's just a, a different name. Normally our parabola is y equals x squared, but z equal to y squared is the same thing. It's just got different labeling. So if I go over to my graph here and I try to draw just that cross section, it's going to look like a parabola z equal to y squared. So that's the parabola z equal to y squared. And then if I want to look at a slightly uh, different one, I might look at the cross section where I don't put x in for 0, I put a 0 in for y, and that's going to give me x squared plus 0. And then z equal to x squared, that's also a parabola, but it's now a parabola for the cross section when y is equal to 0. So it's like a parabola locked into the x, z plane. Or in other words, it looks like this. And then if I want to try to put these, these two things together, uh, what it's going to turn out to be is a bunch of circles that look like this. And indeed, this shape, this particular graph of this function, is a, is a surface that looks like a ball whose sides are all going to be parabolas. Another way to think about these particular circles is that, is that one of those circles might be like 1 equal to x squared plus y squared. So plugging in the value that z is equal to 1, or z is equal to 2, or z equals 3. And 1 equals x squared plus y squared, we've seen that before. That is the equation of a circle. So this bowl that we've created, if we, if we do any slice plugging in a particular z value, is going to look like a circle. And then if you, you plug in like a y value or an x value, you're going to get a parabola. And so this is the kind of shape that we're going to get. The last example was the graph of a function, right? It was z was a function of x and y, but it might not always be that. I might be interested not in the graph of a function, but just of some other surface. So the second example I'm going to give is one of these. It's going to be x squared plus y divided by 2 squared plus uh, z squared. And I'm going to make this equal to 2z plus 3. So some big equation. And notice that this is not written of the form z is some function of x and y. In fact, it's kind of like the equation of a circle. You remember the equation of a circle was x squared plus y squared was equal to the radius squared. Well, that's sort of the pattern we've got. We've got an x squared, we've got a z squared. We kind of have a y squared, we got that divided by 2. We have to figure out that. And we've got some mess off on the right. We have to figure out how to deal with that as well. And what we're going to try to guess is that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals r squared, that that, that base is going to be the equation of a sphere of radius r, just kind of like how x squared plus y squared equals r squared was the equation of a circle of radius r. Now, this is not quite so clean, what I have, but I'm going to do a little bit of algebra and see if we can't clean it up. In particular, 
I'm going to leave the x squared, that's perfectly fine, and I'm going to leave the y divided by 2. I have to think about that y divided by 2 still, but it's the z, the z portion I want to feel, figure out. So I'm going to say that this is going to be z squared minus 2z, and then I kind of want to anticipate that I'm going to be doing some factoring here. Something like a z, my, oh, there's my Canadian sneaking in, my z minus 1 squared. So I want to put a plus 1 here, and if I add a 1, but I don't want to violate things, I need to subtract 1 as well. And I can say all of this is equal to 3. So this is moving my 2z off to the left, and then I add and subtract 1, which is fine. And the reason I do that is I can replace all of this portion. I'm going to do my algebra, and I'm going to copy and paste the first portions. And now I can write this as z minus 1 squared minus 1, I'll move the minus 1 to the other side, is going to give me 4. Another way of thinking about that is as 2 squared. So what we have here is this really nice equation. Something squared plus something else squared plus a third scene squared is equal to what we're going to think of as a radius squared. And we're going to believe that this is kind of going to be like a sphere. So how do I go and try to plot this? So this is, again, my x my y, my z. I'm going to put a few points down here. Here's 1, 2, 3. If I go along, down here is going to be a minus 1. On the y, I'm going to have a 1, 2, 3, 4. On the x, a 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So let's try to make sense of this by doing some cross sections as we've done before. Maybe I'll take the x equal to 0 case first. So this cross section where I've input that value is going to be y squared plus z minus 1 squared is equal to 2 squared. And we've seen these before. This is the equation not of a circle, but of an oval. And there's two different components. The, the one is the divided by 2. How does that work? That works by stretching the y portions by a factor of 2. So if the radius is normally 2, I stretch it by 2. My radius is going to be 4 in the y direction, but not for any of the other directions. Not for the x and not for the z, but in the y direction, it will be stretched to 4. And then the z minus 1 portion, it means that the center of my oval is going to be at the value of z equal to 1. So what am I going to get here? I'm going to get an oval that goes out 1, 2, 3, 4, and has a center point of y equal to 0 and z equal to 1. And it is going to look like this. It's going to come along. It's going to go between 1 and 3, and then 1 and minus 1, and back out, something like that. So what I'm trying to sketch here is, is this oval, kind of a bad sketch, but it is a sketch of an oval, at least something of an approximation of one. So that was one nice approximation, and now I might want to do another. Maybe I want to do the, the y equal to 0, 1. That's another cross-section. And I'm going to get x squared plus z minus 1 squared is equal to 2 squared. Again, we could have seen this before. This could have been the equation of just a circle, but with the z component shifted up by 1. So what I'm going to get, and it's kind of hard to draw exactly, but if my y is equal to 0, what I'm expecting is a circle in the xz plane. So I'm going to draw a circle, try to fill it in like that, and if I plugged in other values of y, I'd get more circles, they'd look something like this. So the picture that I hope I have sketched clear enough is that of a sphere, it is the surface of a sphere, with a couple of additions. First of all, I've shifted up one. That's what the z minus 1 does. It shifts it up so that the center is at an x equal to 0, y equal to 0, and z equal to z equal to 1. So my center there. I'm going to do center with an re, just to lock in my Canadianness. 0, 0, 1. But it's not just a sphere of radius 2. It's a sphere of radius 2 where I then go and take the y portion of it and I stretch it out by another factor of 2, which is why this sort of end point in the y is going to be 4, but in the z and in the x is only going to be a radius of 2, so going from 1 up to 3 if that center point was 1. As you can imagine, there's going to be all kinds of really interesting uh, surfaces that we can sketch, some of them given as equations, some of them given as the graph of some particular function, and we're only just starting to scratch the surface in this video.